Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be talking about this $300 budget gaming PC. Our good friends over at UCW came in clutch and sent over this computer that we saw on their website, and we're going to be talking about it, and more specifically their website, and how you can get some really awesome deals right now with everything going on in the world. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Vixting, and they are celebrating their fifth anniversary as a company. So their fifth anniversary campaign is about staying optimistic even with everything going on, and honestly, staying at home is extremely important, so you wanna have good peripherals to game at home. Vixting has some really cool peripherals, and of course we're showing off this keyboard that we actually got sent over to us, so big thanks to them for that. And if you wanna get 20% off of this keyboard or any other peripherals, use code MATTJACK to get 20% off. The keyboard we're showcasing here is one of their most popular keyboards, coming in at around 20 bucks with our discount code. It comes with some nice RGB backlighting, and is a perfect option for somebody who wants to get their first gaming keyboard on a budget. Also check the link in the description down below because they'll actually be giving away some peripherals. Special thanks again to Vixting for sponsoring this video and congratulations on their fifth anniversary. How about we go ahead and get into this video, shall we? So this PC, which Matt will talk about in just a second, is a really awesome PC from UCW. And basically what we're going to do to make it $300 is we have this GeForce GTX 1650 and also a 240 gig SSD, and that's it. We literally just have to slap these two items in and then in theory, we should have a nice $300 gaming PC. Now this tower right here is a Dell Precision T1650 with a Xeon processor, more specifically the E3-1220V2, which is just a quad-core processor, but it does boast some pretty good clock speeds and is upgradable to some higher-end Xeons that could go up to four cores and eight threads if you wanted to do that. And this whole computer is shipped with 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, and comes in at around $145. Now when we did get this one, we actually got the last one, but the main reason we're doing this video is UCW gets a lot of computers like this, and we've done multiple videos for them in the past. If you hit the on the top corner, we'll link a couple of them. But they have a lot of these pre belts that we normally represent as like great value for money, slap a GPU in, get up and gaming. And especially right now with the availability of PC hardware, UCW is a great option. So check the link down below, and you can use a discount code to save a little bit of money. Don't know exactly what that's going to be just yet, but links in the description down below. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go over how we're going to upgrade this thing, which is going to be very simple, and uh, we'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, the first thing that we're gonna do is the, the funnest part. This is upgrading the GPU. So there's actually a GPU in this one, which is kind of cool that it comes with something, but it is an old Quadra card, which is like 10 bucks. So you're basically just gonna break it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we have the old card. Look how cute that fan is, but we're gonna you know go out with the old and in with the new. 1650 so this is a zotac gaming um, 1650 we probably got it because it was honestly the cheapest one you guys know how we are we go for the budget so first things first open the box probably should have done this ahead of time McAllister time lapse mode dude time lapse me opening the box make it look really super cool. fast i want like lens flares and pew, 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 pew. gun 1650 box is now open do we have any more layers no we do not this is easy easy this is kind of cool esd bubble wrap Ooh. All right, so, oh, it came, it came sheathed. All right, we got everything off. So 1650, no external power required. You see how there's no pins up here to plug anything in. So all we gotta do is, which actually, well, it on the bottom. I might have to put it on the top. Yeah, cause the, the bottom no wouldn't flow. fit. All right, so we're gonna have to pop, let's see, two, two lanes out because this is a two lane card and we just broke all of them. So what you guys can do to make this look a lot cleaner is you're gonna put, these ones back in here. Check this out, guys. Pop! You just do a little bit of force, not an insane amount, and then it pops right in. Now to see if we can fill these two lanes back up. These things are a doozy, I'll tell you what. All right, and now you're just going to take that bracket back, and there you go, graphics card is installed and relatively sturdy. So, graphics card's done. That's all we had to do. Now we have this ADATA 240 gig SSD, so you're just going to once again absolutely destroy the package to get it open. So we actually have a hard drive in this, so we're probably gonna keep the hard drive. And what we can do is we don't really need the disk drive. You can act, obviously add a second SATA in its place, but we're just gonna steal the SATA from that. We already have an extra one here. So we're gonna plug the SATA data in like so, and then we're gonna put this back here. So long story short with the SSDs, you, sh you should mount them, but in this case, we're just, we're testing, so you don't have to mount it. Also, they're basically shockproof. They don't have any moving parts in them, so you can just leave it like that if you want to. It doesn't look clean though, so I recommend mounting it with 
uh, a screw, double-sided adhesive, honestly right up here would probably be a really good place to mount it because you should be able to just have it go sideways, put two screws in it and you're nice and stable from that point. But now we have a storage hard drive, SSD for booting Windows, 1650, and the quad-core Xeon ready to go. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see how she works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $300 Xeon PC all ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick, shall we? Now, I was actually very impressed with this PC when we tested it in games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. We also tested it in Overwatch, and we also tested it in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and honestly, the results were pretty solid. Now, this Xeon E3 1220v2 is kind of on the same par with something like a second gen i5, third gen i5, and you're going to get decent results. Yeah, if you do play games like, let's say, Modern Warfare, you will have to lower the settings to low medium settings to get a really decent result. But I actually think the pairing of this Xeon with the 1650 is a really balanced build and running games like Modern Warfare on low medium settings and getting over 60 FPS in Warzone is actually very impressive, especially for 1080p. So I really can't complain too much about this build overall. If you were to get this one, I maybe would look on the used market at some other Xeons that you could go with, like the E3 1230 which is a four core eight threaded CPU that you could easily slap into this motherboard and have no problems whatsoever. But the standard quad core still can play some games and for 300 bucks and also given the PC hardware market right now, I don't think you can really complain about much. Overwatch is a great example of the fact that this is going to be perfectly fine for any esports titles, whether you're playing Fortnite, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, any of those games. Also, let us know in the comment section down below if you'd like for us to add Valorant to our benchmark run. We are kind of debating that internally, but let me know in the comment section down below if that's something you're interested in. But anyways, Overwatch, you've got well over 100 FPS on high settings 1080p, which was to be expected. The CPU is not going to get bottlenecked in games like this, and the ultimate bottleneck will probably end up being the 1650, which is still a very capable card. To touch on the 1650, again because I know a lot of you in the comment section are going to mention it. The main reason we went with the 1650 is the thing we preach in many of these PC videos that we've done here on the channel. The fact that the 1650 is the best graphics card that does not require external power. Yes, you could probably get away with the 1650 Super with an adapter on this power supply, but at 275 watts, it's kind of pushing it and running a SATA to 6-pin or Molex to 6-pin is always a little bit sketchy in my opinion, but if you did want to go that route, you would definitely get more performance. But with the Xeon, I don't know if I would go much higher than a 1650. And if you do plan on upgrading with a 1650 Super, you would probably get better performance in things like Shadow the Tomb Raider, which does represent most AAA titles out there. You could get away with 60 FPS on low medium settings. We ran our benchmark on medium settings and got an average of about 54 FPS, which is just a little bit shy of the 60 FPS mark that we're looking for. But again, $300, the fact that you have a Xeon, you can't upgrade it. The 16 gigs of RAM that this thing comes with is a godsend. It makes a big difference in games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. Um, overall, I'm very impressed with this thing. And as I mentioned, you might not be able to get this exact build from UCW, but you can check out eBay if you're really wanting to go for something like this configuration with the Dell Precision Tower, or you can go to UCW's website and look at a bunch of comparable builds, which I'll be sure to leave a link to a couple down below that we recommend. So you can look them over and see what you think. So that's going to wrap up the benchmarking section of today's video. I'm actually very impressed with how this thing performed for the money. How about we go ahead and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so as you can see in games like Warzone, we're actually able to play on normal medium settings and get over 60 FPS. Obviously AAA titles, you probably have to go a little bit lower settings, but the fact that this $300 gaming PC can actually play AAA titles is pretty impressive. Now again, this PC is not really in stock right now over at UCW, but they do have a ton of pre-built options like this. If you check out some of our other videos, those might be in stock over there, but definitely look around. They are very helpful over there in getting you a really awesome PC that you can upgrade with a graphics card. And uh, this is just a great example of one of them. And we're very impressed with this system overall. 16 gigs of RAM is really awesome in this setup and just slapping an SSD and a GPU, as you saw in our full instructional guide, is very quick to do and it'll get you up and running in no time. So don't forget to check the links in the description down below. There are affiliate links, so they do help us. And also don't forget to check out UCW. Like Matt said, this specific one probably won't be in stock, but they always have tons of like second, third, fourth gen, you know, i3, i5, i7 stuff and in different configurations. You can even just buy motherboards and processors and whatnot. So highly recommend just checking them out as soon as this video drops, see what they got and buy some stuff. So if you haven't already, don't forget to sub to our other two YouTube channels and also don't forget to follow us over on twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Good computer. Good computer.